So I have been applying to PhD programs recently and oh my God, is it a slog? It, it just takes so much time. It's pretty boring. You have to write these statement of purposes where you talk about your interests and all this. And it's just really boring. So I thought in the spirit of being creative and, you know, applying to programs and AI, why not use AI to generate my statement of purpose? It's a perfect idea. What could possibly go wrong? Disclaimer, if you are on one of the admissions councils I'm applying to, I promise I am not submitting this. Please let me into your program. Thank you very much. Yours truly, Eden. So if you aren't familiar with what ChatGPT is, well, it's a GPT model from OpenAI that does exactly what I was just talking about. It generates text. But the difference between this and perhaps what you've been seeing before is that ChatGPT apparently works quite well. And the reason it does that, and here's an example, by the way, you can see it like fixing code and all this sorts of stuff. Well, previous text models could do this. What ChatGPT does differently is that it uses reinforcement learning as these steps two and three show to further optimize the model towards human preferences. So it's not just trying to predict the next text, it's first trained to predict the next token in your training data, but then it's optimized so that it will work as humans want it to work more specifically. And I tried it out a little bit myself and it works really well as you know, if the millions of people on Twitter and other platforms saying so uh, wasn't enough to convince you. So that's what we're about to see, but will it be able to write me a good statement of purpose? Uh, well, let's find out. Okay, so here we are. This is what the interface likes. I can essentially uh, write something here. So write me something. If I write this, it should write me something. I don't know. Sure, here's a short story. As the sun began to set on a small town in Willow Creek, Jane looked out, blah, blah, blah. So you get the point. Um, <laughs> okay, I, I was going to pause until it stopped, but it's still going. Why is it still going? Um, okay, it finally finished. <laughs> it wrote quite a bit. As you can see, um, it, it's pretty good if you read through this. We're not going to read through it because we're going to jump right into my statement of purpose. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start in sort of the very simple stage of just giving it a little tad bit of information, then sort of give it more information, then talk with it and try and get it to adjust my statement of purpose to make it better. And then we're going to do a little spicy stuff at the end. A quick break before we do a little bit more to thank the sponsor of this video, ClearML. ClearML offers an end-to-end -end platform for ML ops, where you can do everything from tracking experiments to automating an entire machine learning pipeline through to deployment. Here's the code for one of my current projects. And with just an extra several lines of code, I can integrate it with ClearML. And with that, we can now pull up a dashboard and see the progress of my experiment as it runs. Here, I'm just logging the loss because I wanted to get this done in a few seconds, but there is a lot more you can do with this. But really, this is just the tip of the iceberg. You can also create entire pipelines that pull in different versions of your data sets, run hyperparameter sweeps, automatically set up new environments. And because of that last point, ClearMail has no problem with scaling. As I run many experiments in my own research, I personally love some of the features that help me with that. For example, I love how ClearMail not only tracks code version, but also uncommitted Git changes, which is very nice. And also how through the dashboard, I can inject configs into my experiments, which means I don't have to constantly be modifying my code to run a bunch of new experiments. If that sounds like something you're interested in, you can try out their product for free by following the link in the description below. So here's what we're going to start off with. I'm going to say, I am applying to a PhD program in machine learning. Write me a statement of purpose about my research interests, plans for what to work on during my PhD and my future goals. And we are going to hit enter. I have intentionally left this very vague. Uh, so we're just going to see what it comes up with. I'll let it fill in the details and then we'll give it a little bit more details later on, but you can see it's going. So let's just start reading through this. As someone who has always been fascinated by the capabilities of machine learning and its potential to transform the world, I'm excited to apply to the PhD program in machine learning at your esteemed university. My research interests lie in areas of deep learning and reinforcement learning, and I am pre uh, wait, wait, reinforcement learning. How to get that? <laughs> That's actually right. <laughs> I'm, I'm not sure if that was a guess, or maybe it's because reinforcement learning is quite popular right now. Uh, well, well, let's keep going. Uh, or maybe it was because this was trained. At, no, 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 surely not. Anyway, and I am particularly interested in exploring their applications in natural language processing and computer vision. During my, wait, that actually is this <laughs> chat GPT is reinforcement learning that has been applied to natural language processing. Interesting. Mm, a little bit of meta right there. Uh, during my PhD, I plan to focus on developing new algorithms and techniques that can improve the performance of deep learning models in these areas. I'm also interested in exploring the intersection of reinforcement learning and deep learning and investigating ways to combine these approaches to enable more intelligent and autonomous decision making. Ultimately, my goal is to become a leading researcher in the field of machine learning and make significant contributions to the advancement of this technology. I am confident that the PhD program at your university with its distinguished faculty and state-of-the-art research facilities will provide me with the knowledge and skills I need to achieve my goals. I am eager to join the community of scholars at your institution and contribute to the exciting research being done in the field of machine learning. Wow. <laughs> 
this is, <laughs> I mean, you wouldn't get accepted with this because it's way, way too broad, but for, given the fact that I gave it almost nothing, this is, this is pretty good, right? Um, now, I'm actually kind of surprised because it mentioned one reinforcement lane, which I'm interested in. I don't think it uses any personal data from my like uh, Google account. Surely not. It, I think it would have had to ask for permission or something. I think it just got lucky there, which is, you know, it'll get lucky sometimes, or maybe it's just the fact that it's so popular right now. Um, I also do like NLP. So, you know, th these are just, I guess, the three most probably popular fields in machine learning. Um, but okay, let, let's move on. Let, let's give it a little bit more detail. So now I'm going to give it my interests. So let's do this. I will say my main interests are actually in representation learning, meta learning, and model learning, primarily in the context of reinforcement learning and control. And you rewrite the SOP, you know, statement of purpose, with a focus on that. So this will take what it did before and adjust it, I guess, or just rewrite it if, because that's what I asked to do this. So let's read what we get here. And I probably will skip the middle part because if I read all these, this video will take quite a while. As someone who has always been fascinated by the capabilities of machine learning and its potential to transform the world, I'm excited to, okay, so the, it starts off the same. My research interests lie in the areas of representation learning, meta learning, and model learning, and I'm particularly interested in exploring their applications in the context of reinforcement learning and control. So it's instead of uh, inserting what I gave it there. Uh, but let's see. So this part looks like it's a little bit different where it talks about what I want to work on. So during my PhD, I plan to focus on developing new algorithms, techniques. Um, I guess, what is this? In the context of reinforcement learning and control, I'm also excited and interested in exploring the intersection of representation learning, meta learning, and model learning, and trying to combine these approaches. I'm, I'm kind of starting to, starting to summarize here. Okay, so overall, it didn't actually change it very much, which, you know, this isn't great. And I think a reason maybe this isn't great is because it was just adapting what we had before. So I am going to essentially rewrite all this and we're going to have it redo it with a reset context or reset thread. And we're going to see how that does. So I'll be right back once I have that done. Okay, so I've just paraphrased what I, I wrote before, but all in one sort of, you know, input. And let's see what it gives us now. So let's see, it starts off by just saying essentially what I gave it, my interest, and then it moves into why I like these. Okay, let's see, let's see if it gets this right. It's just gonna be guessing, of course. I'm drawn to these areas because I believe they have the potential to unlock significant advancements in the field of reinforcement learning. Okay, true, true. Uh, re reinforcement, or sorry, representation learning, for instance. Okay, so let's see if it gives us a concrete example here can help us develop better ways of representing the complex high dimensional data that is often encountered in reinforcement learning tasks which in turn can lead to more efficient and effective learning algorithms. Okay, yes, but this isn't too specific, I guess. Well, let's keep going. Meta learning, on the other hand, can help us develop algorithms that can adapt to new tasks more quickly and effectively, which has important implications for developing the development of intelligent agents that can operate in the world. See, all these things are true, but still quite general. Now, I'm gonna share a secret with you guys. I actually did try to generate one of these earlier, and it was much more impressive than this, so I'm trying to get something uh, equally impressive as earlier. Uh, but let, let's keep going. We'll keep going a little bit more. Um, so I'm particularly interested in the con this in the context of control because we want these to operate in the complex dynamics of the world. I have developed a strong foundation in machine learning and control. I'm excited to explore these topics in a PhD. So I guess it talks about me being excited to join, you know, people that are like-minded and such, but still this is pretty general. So I'm going to try something a little bit crazy here, maybe to get it to be a bit more specific because to be fair, it only has so much to work with, right? Um, if, I'm, if I'm not telling it, you know, any of the projects I've worked on or any things I want to work on it can only do so much so i'm going to copy and paste a version of my resume in here i'm not sure if it will copy and paste well uh, but we're going to ask it to craft a statement of purpose using the data from my resume and see if it can do that better okay i finished using an incredibly sketchy website to translate my pdf uh, resume into text and i've essentially just prefaced it with what i had before and then i said write a statement of purpose about this for my Oh yeah, about this for my applications using the info from my resume I am providing below. Now I'm not going to show you guys my entire resume because there's a little bit of private information on there, um, but you know you have my education where I went to university, some of the projects I've worked on, some of the companies I've worked at, and one of those projects I worked on. So this should actually I hopefully be enough information to give it um, something something to work with here. So let's let's go ahead and oh oh well it shows everything there. I'm not sure if I'll blur that out or if I'll just let you guys see it because I don't really care. But let's see. Dear me, okay, we're already starting by being a lot more specific. Awesome. We're already getting much more specific stuff. So I maybe maybe I'll read this whole one through. Let's see. 
Dear Admissions Committee, I am writing to apply for a PhD program in machine learning with a focus on reinforcement learning. As a current MSc student at the University of Alberta, I have been advised by Marlis Machado and Adam White, okay, yes, uh, on my thesis exploring the use of discrete state representations in world models for reinforcement learning. I am passionate about representation learning, meta learning, and model learning in the context of control, and I believe that a PhD program will provide me the necessary knowledge and skills to continue pursuing this research. Okay, so it added in who I'm working with, and then it also kept in my interest from before, but it's still somewhat generic. So let's see if it gives us anything more specific here. My background in computer science and experience in software engineering has prepared me well for a career in machine learning research. So this is this is an interesting part. I do have a background in software engineering. So got that right. In my current position as a research assistant at the University of Alberta, I mean, this isn't current, but to be fair, it has no way of knowing that because this was trained on data up to 2021. And I was I was an RA in 2021. So I guess this is kind of correct as of the time that this was trained. I have been working on human in the loop reinforcement learning. I was doing that. And I have designed a system to perform user studies on this topic. I've also previously worked as a software development engineer at Amazon Lab 126, that is true, where I led a project on accuracy analysis and improvement for the Alexa weather team, resulting in increased accuracy for millions of users. Okay, that's true. I'm not sure I would personally include that in my letter because it's not super relevant to machine learning, uh, but it's true. Uh, I am excited about the opportunity to continue my studies and research in machine learning, blah, 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 blah. Thank you for considering my application. So. I don't like this. <laughs> it's still not great uh, because of the fact that, yes, it's putting in some of my specific stuff here, but in my actual letter or uh, statement of purpose, sorry to break it to you guys, this isn't going to be my actual one. I have written my real one, uh, just finished it yesterday. And I talk about specifically machine learning, the machine learning stuff I've done, the research, the research experiences I've had, um, and sort of highlighted how my journey has sort of started in like uh, industry. And then I went into some NLP stuff in academia and then how that eventually led me into reinforcement learning and then finish up by talking about my work in reinforcement learning and what I want to work on in the future. That's generally, I think, kind of how you're supposed to format one of these things. Now, there are different ways to format it, but this is one, it's too brief, and two, it, it's not talking about the right things. I got a much more impressive result the other day when I tried this, so you can get better results than this, but let's try and work with this and maybe have it incrementally improve this. That is what chat GPT is meant for, right? You can kind of go back and forth and incrementally get better results. So let's say this. This is an okay start, but instead of the current second paragraph, I would prefer a focus on how I started in research and what led me into reinforcement learning, what I've been working on recently in that area, and then finish it up with the RL related work I want to do during my PhD. So let's give it this and see if it can work on this. Okay, are we looking at this? This is looking much better. So let's just start from the second paragraph and actually cut down on the first paragraph, I think, which is good because this was a bit too long and it wasn't providing much actual good information. So I've always been interested in research in my, that's actually not true, <laughs> but it doesn't know that. Uh, and my passion for machine learning began during my undergraduate studies at the University of Rochester. Funny enough, I actually have this almost exact same sentence in my real letter. I was awarded this, okay, research scholarship. I guess that's good to put in there. I didn't include that, but uh, that allowed me to work with a professor on a project on hierarchical action sequence learning in reinforcement learning. Okay, so a couple of issues here. This isn't like an actual term. This is kind of something I made up in my research. <laughs> so we, we would need to explain this and it was definitely not the scholarship that allowed me to work with them but anyway this experiment solidified my interest in reinforcement learning and i have continued to focus on this area in my graduate studies and professional experiences so this is technically not true but i, I could see how you would believe this right like oh he worked in reinforcement learning his final year of undergraduate stuff and then he continued doing it seems like his interest picked up then so you know this is plausible in my current position as a research assistant at the university of alberta i've been working okay so now we go back into this so here's what how, how i would change this i would say one I want to focus more on some of my work experience in this, right? Like, like I worked as a machine learning engineer part-time for a bit. That, that's important to note. And I also worked as an intern at Google, even though it was on some NLP stuff, it's still nice, you know, I'll get the Google name drop in there. <laughs> and then I would like to focus less on the human in the loop stuff here because, you know, my interests are not really in that. So let, let's write another thing to try and improve this. And this will be the last improvement. Then I want to try something a little bit funny. We'll see if it works. All right, so here's what I asked it to change. In the first paragraph, talk less about the scholarship because I, I really don't think that's that relevant and then add in some of my working experience as an ML engineer and also my internship at Google. Don't talk about the human in the loop RL stuff because I don't really do so much of that anymore. That was more for an RA. And then talk more about my research with model-based RL because that's what I currently do. So let's see if we can do this. And again, this will be the last generation before we try something a little funny. 
Okay, so here we have it. It looks like it kept the first, or sorry, the second paragraph mostly the same, but it has added stuff in here about the background as I asked it. So it talks about how I was an email engineer at this at this startup, and then also how I interned at Google and, and worked on some machine learning translation stuff. So that's good. I will say it doesn't go into too much. It, it does go into a little bit of detail, but I personally would have worded this differently, but it does what I told it. So, you know, fair. And it says, I'm excited to continue my research in the field of RL and particularly interested in exploring, okay, these three things I mentioned earlier. I believe the PhD program will provide me with more knowledge. You know, it's not really putting my research in here for like my current research for some reason. And I'm going to take a guess and say, maybe it's because in my resume, I have it listed as my current research starting from January, 2022. And I believe this model was trained up to data from 2021. So maybe it's thinking that's like what I plan to do in the future, but even then it's, it's not putting in, uh, which is kind of what I wanted to do. So, you know, oh, well, but here's what I want to do now. Let's take this and ask it what colleges I'm going, it thinks I'm going to get into. <laughs> Maybe give it some options um, and see where it thinks is reasonable. So what I'm asking it is based on the information in my resume and using this letter, which of the schools do I have a decent chance of getting admitted to if I apply to the computer science PhD programs? And I've listed, of course, my university, University of Alberta, uh, sticking in Canada, McGill. Then we also have uh, some of the, the big name U.S. universities, Stanford, CMU, Berkeley, and also some universities that are have, have good RL departments, UMass and the Brown. So let's see, <laughs> where will I get into? Uh, I hate this. I hate this. So it says it's difficult to determine which schools you're going to get into solely based on this information using your resume and statement of purpose. I don't think that's really true. I think most people would be able to give a reasonable guess that, you know, with this letter, I'm not going to get into Stanford. <laughs> or uh or berkeley um admissions decisions are made based on a variety of factors background research experience and personal personal accomplishments which i have all just provided uh, but okay it's important to carefully research the programs you're interested in and tailor your application to each individual school so i mean technically kind of good advice now i actually ran into this problem earlier when i was using chat gpt2 and this is a part of it that annoys me quite a bit now, I know there, there's big liabilities that come with running something like ChatGPT, and I can understand why they would, they would do this, right? It seems like OpenAI is really trying to, as much as they can, stop people or stop ChatGTP from giving like highly probabilistic answers, things that it's like speculating on, which I personally really don't like because I know this is a language model. I'm not going to just trust it with everything it says, and I would hope most people wouldn't. I'm not sure if they would consider this like an aspect of alignment, but if it is, I don't like it. <laughs> it it's really annoying. I, I wish it would just give me a, I guess it would be funny to see. And, you know, I think there is actually a decent amount of guesses you could do with my resume uh, in this poorly written letter. But anyway, that's been me trying to write a statement of purpose. I hope you enjoy this. If you did, consider subscribing to the channel. I do a mix of this and also explaining different, you know, papers and topics and machine learning. So yeah, consider subscribing if you like that sort of thing. Thank you so much for watching and I hope to catch you next time.